this is question are you relieved or are you angry i think there obviously it's a mix of both you're mm -hmm. maybe initially relieved but then immediately then angry and rudy giuliani you're still with us and he's i am still with you and i, I think he's the president passionate is the president is absolutely correct to be very very upset you know it reminds me of uh, secretary donovan's statement when he was acquitted saying where do i go to get my reputation back mm -hmm. i mean this is a horrible thing right. Uh, it is the president of the United States, a, a very tough man, but it is absolutely definitive that he was being investigated for a crime that never happened. There was never any collusion. I can tell you that because I was on that campaign. One of the reasons I've been so passionate is I know there was no collusion. I've known this was a phony charge from the very beginning. And we put the United States through this with all these exaggerated statements from these Democrat politicians that he's that he's, they have evidence that he colluded. Where's this evidence? Mm -hmm. Where is it? In his head? Mr. Mayor, I mean, this, what do you I see? I can see why he'd be upset. And the president has told me numerous times, no other president should ever have to go through this. Mm -hmm. I think there has to be a full and complete investigation with at least as much enthusiasm as this one to figure out where did this charge emanate, who started it, who paid for it? Mr. Mayor, who do you think should run it? that investigation? Uh, the Justice Department can run that investigation. Uh, any, any, any one of a number of U.S. attorneys could do it. There are some very great ones. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have to go through another added expense to the government of the special right. counsel. And there's no conflict with regard to it. Mr. Mayor, Jerome Corsi was on Fox News this morning saying that uh, Mr. Mueller... I watched it. And, well, Mr. M he directly said, then you saw it, to me, that... Robert Mueller and his investigators wanted him to lie about the president and Russian collusion. Do you have evidence suggesting there are other people like Jerome Corsi who are prepared to say that, that they were coerced? I don't know, but I know that situation uh, it, very, very uh, in great depth because we received documents about that. Actually, Jay Sekulow received documents about that when it was going on. And we brought it to the attention of the Department of Justice because it was my view as a former prosecutor that they had gone way past the line. They had actually written out for him what they wanted him to say. Hmm. And they told him he was going to go to jail if he didn't say it. Otherwise, he'd get probation. Wow. It is to the man's credit that he didn't do it. You look at the way Manafort was treated. Manafort was put in solitary confinement. He was brought in to see Andrew Weissman and told that they didn't believe that the president didn't know about the meeting with Donald Jr. and that Russian woman. Manafort maintained 12, 13 times. I didn't know about it. I'm sorry. I don't know about it. Hmm. And then they kept bringing him back. At some point, a man can break and say, I don't want to be in solitary confinement anymore and do what Cohen did, lie. An ethical prosecutor knows when to stop. And I have to tell you, I did this for a living for a long time. I'm very proud of what I did. And if an assistant U.S. attorney did what Weissman did, he'd have been fired in two seconds and put under investigation. Can I ask you, sir, about the um, Southern District of New York and possibly the Eastern District of Virginia pulling on all of these other threads um, with these legal problems, maybe not ending, that emanated from this investigation? Well, hopefully some common sense will now emerge. The Southern District of New York is investigating a non-crime, a payment to settle a case, whether it's a sexual harassment case or a breach of contract case, is not a campaign contribution. If it was, there are 30 members of Congress, at least, for whom the United States government paid money to settle sexual harassment cases. I want to know if they filed that as a campaign finance charge. Of course they didn't. And if you look at rulings of the Campaign Finance Commission, you will see that the commissioners say that payments that are even in part personal cannot be campaign contributions. Because if I had three lawsuits against me, I could go run for office, raise money, pay off those lawsuits with campaign money, and then not run, mm -hmm. which would be absurd. Wow. So Good point. I would I would I would say to my friends in the Southern District, I used to run that place and I mm -hmm. grew up there. Do not try a Weissman tenuous legal theory. It is not acceptable. We generally do not prosecute campaign finance anything 
And this is a nothing. Mr. Mayor, you've talked very extensively there about the legal issues that may still be out there or not. Uh, what about the political ones? Uh, what are your thoughts about the president's reelection prospects now with what he considers a total victory? Uh, and what is your message this afternoon to Democrats who, despite this, may still go ahead and try to impeach the president? I would just say to them, please think about the country. No matter how much you like or dislike the president, agree or disagree with his policies or his conduct, he is the president. He has been unfairly treated with regard to collusion. Certainly they have to see that. And all of what they're trying to do now is completely political. Now, I hope some of them, I mean, I, I, I put out a tweet saying I hope that, that Schiff and a couple of the others apologize for their overstatement. Maybe we can get back to normal. I don't imagine that's going to happen, but... Look, the defense to impeachment is 50 percent of the American people think that the investigation was a witch hunt. I have to imagine if Nadler and the others continue it, they're going to think it's worse than a witch hunt. Mm -hmm. At least these people were Department of Justice prosecutors. Now we're going to have a bunch of politicians trying to find what they couldn't find. Uh, hardly. I hardly think that's the case. Maybe um, a comment from you about uh, Robert Mueller overall, um, who, who I know that obviously he worked very closely together uh, after 9-11 as well. Yeah, I, I know Bob. I had great respect for Bob. I will temper my comments today. I, I, I certainly think one of the reasons this is a complete vindication is this report from the special counsel emerges from a group of enormously partisan, rabid Hillary Clinton supporters. I can't imagine how Bob hired such a biased staff. These are people who were not just neutrals or just Democrats or just Republicans. These are people who were very, very active political activists for Hillary Clinton. One of them was the lawyer to the Clinton Foundation. That's absurd. This report is even more of an exoneration because it comes from completely the other side. They tried very hard. They right. intimidated people. They went beyond every rule I can think of, and yet they couldn't find any evidence with which to claim there was collusion or obstruction. If that's not an exoneration, I've never seen one. Mr. Mayor, we started this conversation with you calling out what you said was fake news about collusion going on for a long, long time. There have also been a lot of stories, people in the media taking shots at you personally and saying that your strategy as an attorney for the president was backfiring. Do you feel some personal vindication this evening? Well, I say our whole team does, absolutely. Nothing I did is, was just me. It was Jay and Jane and Marty. Uh, we're a team. We've been very, very close. We've been doing it for a year. One or other of us have been attacked over everything. I think we're good lawyers, and we did a good job, and we had an innocent client, which makes it easier. <laughs> sure does. President, the president was completely vindicated. And, and he, as he said, and, um, right before he got on Air Force One, as we watch it taxi down the runway at, at Palm Beach, headed back to Washington, D.C., in the White House, uh, a total vindication of no collusion and a complete and total exoneration, as Press Secretary Sarah Sanders said as well. Mr. Mayor, I wonder if... An investigation by people who hate him. Mm -hmm. So there are also some Democrats who clearly in the Congress, uh, and you know the names, who I don't want to use the word hate, but they have been pillorying this president from day one. It's now in their hands in terms of pressuring the Attorney General, William Barr, as to how much information he's going to release. What is your advice about how all of this should play out in terms of how much information from the actual Mueller report should be shared with the Congress and the public in terms of the evidence? Well, I think that the attorney general has the right standard, which is as much as he possibly can, consistent with the law. For example, grand jury material. He's got to go to a judge. If the judge agrees to let it be released, it can be released. If the judge doesn't, he would commit a crime if he released it. Mm -hmm. So I think that the attorney general will release the maximum amount he can release under the law. From our point of view, the president, his lawyers, private lawyers, I'd like it all to be out because we can rebut any and all of it. I don't think we have to rebut anything. This was a far better report from the special counsel than I expected, except for that one thing about not exonerating him mm -hmm. 
on, on obstruction. Uh, obstruction. And prosecutors don't exonerate, guys. They don't exonerate. Real quick, Mr. Mayor. You can't prove a negative. Real quick, we have about 30, we have about 30 seconds. You yeah. have said for a long time you were putting together a report to rebut the Mueller report. Is that now null and void? Do you still feel the need to put out a report? As of today, no. But, of course, they haven't put their report out yet. This is just a, a very, very brief summary. So we'll, we have to reserve judgment on that. We have a very powerful rebuttal that I think completely blows out of the water the obstruction claim. But I'm not sure we have to do that. Uh, mm -hmm. The attorney general in two paragraphs and Rod Rosenstein, remember, remember the attorney general, not just his opinion, it's the opinion of Rod Rosenstein and the Office of Legal Counsel, mm -hmm. as well as the attorney general. Or they think Rod Rosenstein all of a sudden, you know, hmm. flipped out. Right. It was ridiculous. Rudy Giuliani, the personal attorney for the President of the United States, thank you very much thank for joining you. us so quickly amid much. this breaking thank news. You for giving us so much time. Thank you.